plants. Soil provides a haven for all sorts of creatures. Ants play important roles in the ecosystem. They disperse seeds and pollinate flowers, like this piney woods geranium. Its seeds develop, this flower seeds develop on little curved stalks that spring up when the seeds are ready, and they fling the seeds some distance from the plant. Then sometimes the ants pick them up and carry them farther. Ants are the main source of food for horned lizards, who go from one spot busy with ants to the next. One of the reasons horned lizards look like that and have that shape like a little tank is because they need space inside for all those indigestible ants. <laughs> ants are also the main food for flickers, which are in the woodpecker family but don't eat the way other woodpeckers do. They just land on the ground and eat ants. Flickers do nest in tree cavities like other woodpeckers, and even the females like this one hammer on the trees and make a lot of noise. If you think about it, there are lots of animals that shelter in the ground along with ants, like the prairie dogs who churn and aerate the soil of their little towns. Sometimes in summer, we've seen bear tracks in Fay Canyon, although we've never seen an actual bear. But one time, Tom and a friend hiked down past our usual turnaround spot to a point in the canyon and found this opening. Tom stuck his head in, and now he thinks he knows where the Fay Canyon bear spends the winter. Climate isn't a hidden mystery like the soil, but it can be pretty complex and mysterious in its own right. Meteorologist Kurt Meyer says our climate is one of extremes and surprises. Today is no exception. <laughs> Yet despite what can seem unpredictable to us, there are some climate averages that determine the boundaries of the Ponderosa Forest. Ultimately, climate is the main influence on all the plants in the forest community, including the trees. Here in the southwest, Ponderosa forests develop where there is between 17 and 22 inches of rain a year, rain and snow, generally between about 6,000 and 8,000 feet above sea level. Ponderosas have broad general habitat requirements and can thrive in great numbers where those requirements are met. You've probably heard many times that the forest from Flagstaff to the White Mountains is the largest anywhere in the world. Sometimes you also hear people say that the Ponderosa forest is just a monoculture, just a whole bunch of trees that all look alike. But precipitation statistics don't tell the whole story. For one thing, there are many ways that moisture is lost in our dry and sunny climate. A tree or a plant can't always make the most of the moisture that falls because things happen to it. In full sun, snow often evaporates. It doesn't melt. It just vaporizes, it sublimates, before it can melt into the ground. Here, this tilt of the slope toward the south increases the sun's intensity. Moisture vaporizes to the disadvantage of the ponderosas. But junipers, which are more drought resistant, mingle among the, among the pines at a place like this. Most plants sharing this landscape with the big pines have much narrower ranges of tolerance than the trees do in terms of seasonal temperatures, precipitation, and exposure to light. Below the level of the trees, a range of microclimates sustain widely diverse plants, insects, lizards, birds, and mammals. This is especially true where steep slopes face north, south, east, and west. This is a Google Earth image of where we walk. It's all ridges, ravines, and canyons. It's a welter of microclimates created by the tributaries of Walnut Creek, which runs north up Sandy's Canyon and into Walnut Canyon. This is Fay Canyon. This is Skunk Canyon. And Flagstaff is up here. These drainages, uh, these drainages form a dendritic pattern, like the branches on a tree. They are migration corridors and habitat for insects, birds, and other animals, and they extend the range of plants from both high and low elevations and from north and south, east and west. This ridge is between Fay and Skunk Canyons. 
It's rocky, sunny, and warm. Cold night air drains down the slope to the canyon bottoms, where it pools and persists into the next day, while the ridge warms up quickly in the morning sun. You can instantly feel changes in humidity and temperature when you drop down into the moist and shady canyons on the right and left. But whatever sensitivity we, may humans, we humans may have to our surroundings is nothing compared with the sensitivity of the plants. We find this lovely, delicate little flower blooming in only one spot and only on this ridge. It may be elsewhere, but we haven't found it. Such an exquisite flower seems too delicate to be suited to such a dry and sun-drenched habitat. But to our astonishment, we learned that its common name is the Huachuca Mountain Morning Glory. It's basically a Mexican species that is found around here in just the right environment on a dry, sunny ridge. This is the south-facing slope above Skunk Canyon. In the northern hemisphere, for every degree of tilt toward the south, it is as if a slope has been moved 40 miles or so toward the equator. Ponderosas often are struggling on south-facing slopes. It's mostly junipers and a few pinyon pines that do well. Here on this especially steep and exposed slope, we found a patch of peri agaves. The map of their distribution shows that peri agaves are centered in the south and extend down into Mexico. But they're doing just fine in their little microclimate up here in the frozen north. We discovered them in full bloom on July 16, 15, 2003. While we were admiring them, a hummingbird swooped in for a set. The slope right across from those agaves faces north. North-facing slopes like this receive less light and heat from the sun. Snow persists here longer, and so do Douglas firs. Douglas firs are abundant in British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest, but are much more restricted the farther south you go. In other words, Douglas fir is a northern tree. This is another likely place to hear a hermit brush. Douglas fir create wonderful, deep forest primeval, dripping with lichen. You can always tell a Douglas fir by its distinctive cones. They look like little Mice are hiding in them with their back legs and their tails hanging out. In such cool, shady places, we find woodland pine drops, which get so little sun that they can't photosynthesize enough food for themselves. Instead, they depend on a mycorrhizal association with neighboring tree roots. We find it so interesting that species from north and south overlap around here, each becoming established in the locations that are most like their homelands. The Douglas fir thrive on slopes facing north, while the agaves face their own community to the south. There is a sweet scent of damp earth right down on the bottom of Skunk Canyon. Many plants considered to be riparian plants grow there, such as wild grapes and dogwood. The word riparian is from the Latin word for riverbank, but there doesn't have to be flowing or year-round water for riparian plants to survive if a place is cool and shady and moist enough. Fairy bells, for instance, are fine as long as they're in moist, shady microclimate like this north-facing wall. These plants don't seem to require much soil, though. They grow right out of the rock. In considering climate, we can't leave out the seasons. As we all know by now, ours is a four-season climate. Well, it's... it's more than that, really. We have more than four seasons, don't we? We have uh, spring that is wet and cold. We have a spring that is dry and windy. We have a summer that is dry and warm. And we have a summer that's very rainy. And it goes on from there. Some, uh, some winters are different than others. Winter can be very dry, or we can have roof collapsing, road closing snowfalls, as we did this year. Either way, for many plants and animals, winter is a season of dormancy. We may stay inside more if it's snowing, but many of these plants and animals either go dormant or move away when this season comes about. Not necessarily, but in many cases. The short days of winter are mostly silent and tranquil in the forest. Although we all know well what a challenging season it can be, it can also be a time for us to rest. Back before we humans had electric lights, no one even considered trying to do as much in, on a day in January as on a day in July. 